Hey, what's going on guys? If you know me, you know I love doing controller reviews and today is no exception. We have two great controllers in front of us that I use as my daily drivers for PC gaming. On the top here, we have the Xbox One S wireless controller. This one has the benefit of having Bluetooth built in, as well as a headphone jack, as opposed to the original models which had neither. You had to get a separate thing to add in the headphone jack. Then you have the Xbox One Elite controller, a much more pricier solution. How much more pricier? Well, about $150 worth. We'll set you back. You have the headphone jack, but no Bluetooth connectivity. Now, there are some rumors that there might be a new Xbox One Elite controller coming out because this was originally released to compete with Scuf controllers, Microsoft's first-party solution alternative. So, I'm going to say that until we see the Xbox One Scarlet, we're not going to see a new Elite model controller. You might be wondering, Hey, Jake, we've seen a million of these Xbox One controller comparisons online. Why the hell should we even pay attention to this? Well, the reason why is because there's actually some hidden functionality in these controllers that make them the best for PC gaming, bar none. And we're going to go over them right now. So to start with, we have the dongles. So when it comes to connectivity with your PC, you have a few options out of the box. Uh, for one, if you want to just go wired, you can take any of these controllers and connect them with a micro USB connection, which works fairly well, as you'd expect. But if you want to go wireless, you pretty much have to use the Bluetooth connectivity on the Xbox One S controllers if you're not using a dongle. The Bluetooth connectivity works fairly well, provided you have a driver update on your Windows PC. The issue, of course, being Bluetooth just doesn't work very well, at least for me. Now I've been at my desk, I've been 10 feet away from my computer, and I always have some kind of connectivity issues. Windows either breaks the driver connections, I've tried different USB adapters and none have really worked for me. There's always some kind of issue. And what's more is that even when everything is working as intended, when I hit the button to turn the controller on, it just takes sometimes a little bit longer than I'd like for it to connect. Sometimes it takes upwards of 10 seconds. It's just a little silly. So with that in mind, you have the dongles. Now, Sony has their own version of this. It's a DualShock 4 dongle. I covered it a while ago. And it's gotten a lot better because Steam now natively supports these controllers for wireless connectivity. So you don't have to do any weird configuring. It's usually going to give you your own profile set for the buttons and it's going to treat it like an X input controller and then all your new games are going to work just fine. So with that in mind, um, the DualShock 4 is a great alternative if you can find the dongle for it. The keyword is, if you can find the dongle. The Microsoft ones are readily available. There's two different generations of them, so you can pick which one you want. If you want to pay a little bit more for something smaller, more durable, it has the sync button up here, so you plug that into your computer. You hit the sync button. You hit the button on the corresponding controller that you want to sync up, and every time you turn it on, it takes less than three seconds for everything to connect, and it works perfectly. I don't have any drops, no connection issues, and I can have multiple controllers hook up to a single dongle. The bigger one is a lot more clunkier. I do not recommend getting this one. You can grab this guy off the Microsoft Store. I'll leave everything where you can get all this stuff in the description below. You can get this for usually less than 30, and this guy I've seen for less than 20. This one's on Amazon, but the bulkiness of it makes it a lot easier to get damaged or break, especially if you have it on the back and you reach back there to unplug stuff to do maintenance on your PC. You can accidentally bang it with your wrist, which is what happened to this one. There's a little bit of a bend right there. So getting back really quick, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here. The Sony dongle is out there and it is quite good if you use Steam, which if you're a PC gamer, you pretty much have to, but they've kind of discontinued it. I can't really find it very cheap online. If I can find a good alternative site where they have it for retail price, I'll link it. But for now, it's a little bit tricky to find. You can, of course, use Bluetooth on the controllers to connect to your PC, but I always find the dongles to be 100% better because you have a dongle, a device that is designed to work from the ground up with the controller. It's not like Bluetooth where you have a USB dongle from a different brand in your computer, and then you have the USB transmitter receiver inside the device itself, and then you have the interference in between. There's gonna be specific packaging directions or some kind of instruction as to how far you can go, what's the range, how it works, because Bluetooth is all variable depending on what kind of items. This is at least built for the controller itself. The second reason I always recommend the Xbox One controllers. Now on a good day, you can get the Xbox One S controller for about 45 bucks, which is a decent price. I have about four of them right now, including the Elite, and I just 
pass these around when my friends come over because you know I am spending a little bit of money to get all these controllers set up but with one dongle and four controllers there are no complaints except for batteries so the Sony PS4 controllers, the DualShock 4 controllers, have a rechargeable battery, which you'd think is a great thing. The problem is that those lithium-ion batteries, as you charge them, as you use them, they degrade and they lose their charge over time. What that means is that when you get a DualShock 4 for the first time, you might get 8 or so hours of battery life out of the box, but as you use them, within the next 1 or 2 years, you might have noticed this if you use the controller, suddenly you have less charge time on your battery life. So you went from eight hours to maybe four or six. So that can be a bit of an issue. Now the Xbox One controllers do get a lot of hate because they still use AA batteries. But I find that the rechargeable ones, while they are, again, an expensive solution, they are the best solution. Let's say you have four people at your house, everyone's grabbed an Xbox One controller, everyone's playing. So, Imagine one of them dies. You're gonna have to bust out a 10 foot long micro USB cable to keep them playing, and then guess what? Like, it, it might not be long enough from where they're sitting, or they might have issues where the uh, micro USB cord itself, you might have bought like a cheap one to compensate, and it turns out it's not charging the controller fast enough to use it. And so you might have to plug it into the wall instead of the device itself, like the PC. So you plug it into a two amp charger, and you just got wires and crap running everywhere. With this solution, you have rechargeable AA batteries. These specifically are in a loop. You don't have to get these, but I find that they're the best. They don't really degrade over time as quickly as, say, the DualShock 4 does. Um, they are a little bit more expensive. They are one of the more expensive rechargeable batteries on the market, but they do last. They have a good battery life. There's even a Pro model. Uh, it's sold in black with a charger. They have a higher milliamp hour. And the most important thing, I think, for these guys, especially if you use a lot of retro wireless controllers, is that they do not leak. They are not alkaline batteries. So what that means is that you can have these things in controllers for years and they will not leak. You ever open an old, old toy or an old controller to replace the batteries, bust it out, and part of the batteries just kind of leaked out and just sprayed everywhere? That can actually damage the internal components of what you're using. So you have to be very careful with that. But with the double A's for the Enel Loops, you don't have to worry about that ever. They give you a lot of battery life, I'd say more than 10 hours for me on average. And you just pop them into the recharger, and then if you have another set, you could just take that out and hot swap them in. So you're never gonna run out of charge. Now if you have four controllers, you're gonna have to have a bunch of extra sets of batteries, which I've, yeah, I bought, but it's the price to have the perfect setup. And speaking of perfect, the Elite Controller. This is the best controller I've ever used. Now, there were a lot of things coming out when this thing first got released. A lot of complaints, a lot of people were finding the uh, quality control issues were giving them... Just, there was just a really frustrating launch, apparently. Um, now, I can not confirm or deny if those issues are still present. I've been using this thing for a couple months and this is a refurb model, so it's been pretty good. I will say this, though. If you are worried about dropping $150 and the controller just breaks within a year, which you should be, that's no excuse that uh, a controller this expensive should have any issues, Microsoft does stand by their product. I've talked to people at my old job where I got this, I've um, used Microsoft customer support myself, and if you pay the premium price for one of their objects, for one of their items I should say, when you return it, sometimes they'll give you a brand new model. They don't just do a terrible refurbished job and then they give you back the same thing only for it to break in a month again past the warranty you know so with that being said yeah it is quite expensive to buy one of these things but Microsoft does stand by their product so if you have any issues with these controllers for the love of God send them back and you will get some good support for them now the main reason I use this over the traditional Xbox One controller is actually not because of the removable thumbsticks or the d-pad the uh, hair triggers, or even the panels that you can add on the back, which are all really cool, by the way. The main reason I use this guy is the durability of the parts, as you'd expect. So you see the little metal right here? All metal, all plastic. Now, you could technically take apart a Xbox One controller and mod it with your own custom parts. That's fine. But for people who don't want to do that, or 
If you just want a solidly built product all around, even the rim inside here is better build quality, so you'd have to replace the entire faceplate if you were to do it on that guy. What I'm trying to get at here is every controller, even the AAA first party ones or the expensive third party ones, there's always some issue I'm having, and right now the Xbox One controller, controllers, when you start moving the stick around a lot, sometimes the rim grinds against the base over here, so it creates this like chalky effect in here, and normally it's fine, but after a while you start to feel this grinding texture effect when you start to bottom out the edges, and it sounds like you're grinding cheese or, 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 uh, or sandpaper. It, it feels awful, like you're grinding a rock against a cheese grater. That <laughs> yeah, not a great image, but this metal construction and the better rim I haven't felt that at all. It feels smooth as uh, when I first got this guy. And it's overall a great performing controller. It's a little bit heavier, the buttons don't line up, but it's an amazingly well-made controller. If you can find this guy for less than the retail price, it is almost worth the full price, but I'd say try to find it a little bit cheaper. I got this at my job on the refurb rack for 40 bucks, and <laughs> yeah, it's been perfect since then. And if you are planning on Getting a lot of these controllers for your friends, if they don't own Xbox One controllers, well, you're going to be spending quite a bit of money. You have like $30 for the miniature adapter over here, you got $45 for the base controller, you have about $25 for a set of these batteries here. It, it gets very expensive, but if you want the best experience, I'm not talking about the cheapest or the most value-oriented, I'll have some videos in the description if you want to check those types of controllers out, but if you want the best! For your PC, the best. Give the Xbox One lineup of controllers a shot and make sure you try out the chargeable batteries and the dongle. I swear you will never go back to anything else. I haven't and I'm super picky. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out some other videos, I have some $30 or less controller recommendations as well as some other videos that I will be recommending on the video itself and in the description as well as links to every product I've checked out here on the table. I'll see you next time. I'm out.